How are you? Good, man. It's Friday, right? I'm excited. This is a good Friday. We got... It's not a good Friday. Well, a good Friday. A good Friday. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I got you now. You're so religious. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm really fond of our new background here. It looks fantastic. I don't know if the audience looks realizes fantastic. that we've gotten this. It's yeah. very uh, official. It's it very is. official. It is. We have a, a very important guest today. Uh, one of my dear, shall I say, family members? Absolutely. All right. Lauren Connors of Cayman Construction. Nice. How are you today, Lauren? I am great. It is Friday. So. I hear you. Mm-hmm. You We're got excited. any plans today, this weekend? You finish up some work. What you got? Oh, Saturday is always a very nice and quiet work day. So there's that and uh, probably some <laughs> shenanigans as well because balance. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no doubt. Oh, yeah. So Friday, uh, so a, a buddy of mine used to own a, a drywall place, mm-hmm. and he said Friday was very difficult to get everybody to show up for the uh, 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 for getting done what they needed to get done every other week. I think He's, Monday's harder. <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I totally agree he said with the Monday, Monday comment. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so let me give a little background on Lauren here. Cool. Really Let's quick. Um, Lauren and I go back. So basically... My best friend growing up, my boy, Taylor Longacre, shout out. I hope he watches this. He has to watch this. I'm sure this. he yeah. does. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is Taylor's little sister, Lauren. And Lauren, um, I've known Lauren since 1994 or 95. What year were you born? 90, 91. 91. 91. So I think it was 94 or 95. Wow. Yeah. So this this dates back to... I had just joined a new elementary school. My parents were, uh, were, were shuffling me around to find the right fit for me. Right. And <laughs> we're going to call it, Is that what we're going to call it? Yeah. Typical. I was special. That's right. Typical just. <laughs> she can go into that. <laughs> um, third the- grade, I, I'm sitting in my new seat at my new class, and I joined this school late. So I have no friends. I am scared shitless, right? And then this kid walks in late, like all disheveled. And, like, definitely has this, like, little cocky, right. like, attitude Swag. about right. him. Right. Yeah. Swag. That's right. So he walks up, and I'm like, this motherfucker's going to sit right next to me. Sure enough, he sits like <laughs> Plops <here>. down. <laughs> and I'm like, <gasps> you know, like, scared. And he's like, what's wrong with you, man? And I, I remember looking at him, and I remember being like, holy cow. And then we became best friends. I mean, every weekend. What grade we was were this? To, third grade. Third grade. Third grade, Indian Rocks Christian School. We became best friends, and then obviously from that point forward, I mean, Lauren, you can attest to this. We spent every freaking day every together. Day. Yeah. Every weekend. Yeah. Soccer. Something. We were on the same soccer team That's together awesome. growing up, all that. But um, Carpooled when we finally, they finally oh, got licenses. Right. I mean. Yeah, it was. But we gave Lauren constant. pure hell. Oh, oh they they of course. so bad to me. Oh, of course. They yeah. were so bad But think, I, think how strong it made you. Oh, yeah, it's really hard to make me cry. Oh, well. Really hard. We'll get to that part, I'm sure. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, I would like to take a little sliver of why she's so successful. It's because we <laughs> right. just beat the hell out of her as a kid. I'm fine. <laughs> Do you have any stories um, that Did you that remember are, that Justin might remember oh, differently? That are <laughs> Keep in mind, I have an audience. PG-13 oh, at least. Well, I will say that um, I, they definitely held me down and did very rude things to me that are not <laughs> yeah. camera appropriate that yeah. had to do with spitting and right. yeah. uh but i we will say my favorite revenge that i ever got let's hear it okay so oh, one no. time we were all out playing manhunt in the backyard right. and they were cheating and they were being mean and i'm much younger than them four years younger than right. them so uh either faster than me they're stronger right. than me and they would kind of whatever did you say smarter I, I didn't hear so her I say could, smarter than her yeah no definitely not <laughs> definitely because not. finally when they were cheating and they made me be it for about the sixth time in a row I went inside and left after they hid and my dad caught me on the couch uh, and said what are you doing weren't you outside supposed to be playing with Taylor and Justin I said they're still hiding right and my dad said okay and I'll Let never forget hide. Justin finally came in 45 minutes later <laughs> Lauren you're never playing with us again and I was like okay <laughs> <laughs> foiled, foiled. Yeah, but that was the whole plan in her little innocent mind back then. Was like, okay, if I go inside, they're gonna not want me to play again, and I win. Yeah, right. this is it. More she, of how long will it take for them to figure out? I'm that's not right. Forty five for minutes. Them. I heard that part. Well, you, I'm you thirty two. I'm thirty two now, and I still didn't figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> this is when you found out what happened right now. 
<laughs> I'm like this, like, oh my god, I'm like traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> Who's crying now, baby? <laughs> All right, so um, let's talk about kind of growing up. Um, give us a little glimpse into, you know, what your ambitions were, what you did as a kid, going through school, that type of thing. Okay, well, I actually knew I was going to be an architect, and I got into UC Berkeley, which at the time was the best architecture school in the com- or in the country, and I right. was extremely excited about it. However, I went to college when I was 16. Right. I was ahead in school, and my father looked at me and said, if you think you're flying across the country to California no to go to school, you're out of your mind. Good for him. And I've just about never been so angry in my whole life. Right. Um, but then I was also accepted into the University of Florida, and because my older yep. brother went there, my dad said that is where you are going and right. i was very unhappy about it at the she's time. so brilliant like yeah. i remember growing up as a kid just being like holy shit you know like there's people that really really try hard to be smart and there mm-hmm. are things that you can be really good at and everyone has mm-hmm. their um you know their gift yeah. their strengths and their gifts but lauren could correct me if i'm wrong like her brother barely pick up a textbook and know the whole thing from front to back yeah well i will say it's very interesting going from you know, a town like this and being such a big fish in a small pond and then you get thrown into UF and you're like, everybody here is brilliant. Yeah. So that's definitely... Not at UF. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) See, he's a Georgia Bulldog. Oh, that's such a shame. You want to switch spots with me? I just... I should, have, um, <laughs> I should have told you that mid, <laughs> mid-podcast. Yeah. It's this, not going to go well from here. This is a rough year for that, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, All the way around. I, uh, I went into architecture school there, and yep. I took a couple years of that. And I'll tell you that the things that they make you do in the architecture school there are not the things you do in real life. Right. Yeah. You have to construct little models and yep. using uh, spaces. and it's just like real estate. Oh, gosh, yeah. it was just, I I hated it. I didn't mm-hmm. like it. I was great at drafting and doing things like that, and I quit. And I decided, okay, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be an attorney. And uh, I <sighs> went for my pre-law degree. Right. And I got six months before I graduated from my pre-law degree, and I said, I don't want to go to law school. And so I said, I'm going to be a doctor. And so then I completely changed my major again. <laughs> and I graduated with... And now you're, what, 18? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Um, I graduated with a biomed degree. And so then I was going to apply to medical school. Right. And in between this time, I Insane. had been managing some medical clinics and acting as a uh, medical weight loss director. Yep. Right. And... I was hating it. I had too much on my plate at the time. I was managing two different offices and taking patients all day long. And my husband said, just stop, just quit and help me with what I do. And he's in real estate. And so I basically played secretary Yeah. and I helped him do all sorts of things. And he, uh, it was about six months before I was going to be applying for med school. I'd already taken my entrance exams and you're like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. He said, hey, I'm, I, I want to flip a house. I found a house on Craigslist, mm-hmm. as odd as this is, because that was one of my secretarial jobs. Right. Was to <laughs> Hunt them. Scour Hunt them, that's the right. Figure them out. Yeah. So I found a little house in Largo for $65,000. That was a three-bed, two-bath, one-car garage place that uh, guys... How long ago was this? When was this? 2016. Uh, okay. And, uh, no, 15. 2015. I want to buy something at that price. Right? Yeah, yeah no joke. It would, so the, the guy's mother died, and he just didn't want it, and so he got rid of it. I found it on Craigslist. We bought it, and Terry said, okay, we own this house, so you can play contractor on it. He said, you have $30,000. You have 35 days. We need Go. to flip this house. Right. And I did it for $29,000 in 30 days, and we sold it for $6,000 more than we wanted for it the first day on the market. And nice. I was like... Oh, I'm, I love it. I'm good at this. <laughs> I love this. Uh, it is. It's never it funny though. With the lucrat- yeah. lucrat- it's flirts, flirts with being as lucrative as going to med school and being a doctor, except for I don't have to go sure. two hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt. debt. That's right. I don't have to go through six yep. more years of school, which at this point, after almost getting my degree and so many things, I'd been in school forever. Right. I was in college for seven years, right. getting almost so many degrees, and. Yeah. Uh, I said, I'm not going to apply to med school yeah. anymore. Just like that. Yeah, because, I mean, as brilliant as you are, it's it's obvious. That's not what you were supposed to do. Right. No, it's not. And, and always... you wouldn't have been bouncing around from one thing to the next if it was what you should have been doing. You were, you were trying to figure it out, and, you, and in 30 days, you figured it out. Yes. That's fantastic. So it's it, I've always been around it. My dad was a developer growing up. Right. I was I, just going to get into that, too. Yes. I love that. So that's the, the whole background on Lauren, and this is my perspective of it. Her father is brilliant. 
Right. I mean, Blake is basically my second father. Right. And uh, the guy taught me so much because my dad and him were best buddies back then too. So, right. it, you know, everything we all did together was together. Right. And, um, you know, he, he raised me differently than my dad did, and it was a really good blend. But going back to Lauren is, you know, there is so much of Blake in his smarts and his business savvy and his ambition, but also his rebel yell right. is in Lauren. Right. Mm. And, you know, Blake is a, you know, I'm going to do it my way kind of guy. Yeah. Is and that right? I, I admire the shit out of him for it. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's a few years for that. Right. <laughs> my, uh, my dad definitely tells me that he's, he thought he, he was going to lose me a couple times, <laughs> go off the deep end. I definitely was one of those, uh, I wanted a motorcycle as soon as I could drive. Right. So I went and got two jobs after school that I would work full time. Oh my God. Without my parents knowing, went out and bought a motorcycle right when right. I turned 16. And, uh, and that's why you didn't go to UC Berkeley. I'm just telling you right now. Yeah, so. yeah she's, <laughs> she's always had that like badass side to her. Like, yeah. I, I'm going to do it right. because I, I want to. Right. And yeah. that is so cool. And well, that's now why he she's loves an it. Right. Now, he, now your dad loves it. Oh, yeah. Then. Not so much. Well, yeah. I will say when he found out about the motorcycle, there was such a, the look on his face was so, I should be mad, but that's my girl. <laughs> that's something I would have done. <laughs> that's something I would have done. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of that mirror look. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it totally is. Yeah. I mean, so that's that's where, I, I think that's where that came from is, is the apple definitely did not fall far yeah. from the tree because her dad was so successful in so many development endeavors and... Um, there's so many business avenues that he went down and was so successful at that, you know, and his, his story is unbelievable, what he came from and what he was able to build and uh, the things he was able to do, especially with the people that he was surrounded by at the time. Yeah. I mean, the guy has seen it. Right. It's cool. It's really cool. So yeah. fast forward, we are at the stage where you're just figuring out life's passions and that's something that we talk a lot about on this yep. podcast is you know we're often told a narrative to go certain routes because that is what is expected of us and safe right. it's it nothing is more safe than following what you love right right but that's the opposite of what we're uh, opposite of what we're told right we're told go find something safe and then eventually you'll get to do what you love and being an entrepreneur has nothing to do with being safe that's right so, and I love that. Right. Yeah. Yep. So talk to me about that jump. So you're just, you know, said, scrap it. I have all these different degree aspirations behind me. This is what I want to do. Well, you know, um, I, I chalked all of my different years in college up to, I, I didn't just fail at doing it. I'm just Learning very something. educated in a lot of different <laughs> wide variety of subjects. Um, I will say when I told my parents that I was not going to medical school anymore, oh, um, yeah. that was a very interesting Hopefully that was over the phone. Oh, I actually <laughs> still bring up to my dad that he said to me, at least you can identify all the mold you find in those houses. <laughs> and I still bring it up to him and I say, yes, I can. Yeah. And, uh, That's freaking awesome. <laughs> so it was very scary. Um, I had some come to Jesus's with my husband about yeah. how terrifying it was. I, I definitely was never expecting to open my own business. Right. Yeah. Um, but once I figured out, you know, that I liked doing what I was doing, I, I immediately started studying for my GC test yep. and I went in and took the test and I passed it. Nice. And I shocker there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I continued to flip houses with my husband Yep. and, uh, I actually so in order to get my license itself, it's much more than the test. It is right. a lot of red tape. It's a lot right. of experience. Right. But if you have a four-year degree, you need one year under a contractor. Right. And so there was a local contractor, and I went to him, and I said, hey, I want to you know, work under you so I can have this right. experience. Right. And he said, good luck. I have I don't make money on retail jobs. All I ever do is our flips. I've tried to do retail. I failed miserably. Here's a checkbook. Don't overdraft my account. Give me my cut. And I said, All okay, right. Okay, let's go. And uh, the first job I went and I did and I came to him and I gave him his check and he looked at me and he said, you made money on a retail job. And I said, yeah, yes. And he said, how? What did you do? <laughs> and so it was a lot of self-education. Oh, a I lot bet. of reading, oh, a bet. lot of audiobooks, yeah. and a lot of 
flying by the seat of my pants. My poor dad is actually my accountant now, and you know, he's oh, yeah. he goes through and he does all my in house bookkeeping, and you know, he's had to go back through past years, and he's like, what? were you doing on an accounting <laughs> side of things? And you know, I'm just there with a spreadsheet in my bank account. And I'm just, right. oh, those two numbers cancel out. I don't need to add them. And my dad's like, what? <laughs> Dad, <laughs> totally wrong. <laughs> totally flying by the seat of my pants here. I'm sorry. Right. But um, so got my, uh, got my education that I needed, worked for a year under a contractor and applied everything for my licensing. And it took about six months going back and forth with the right. state about what they needed. Wow. And uh, that's I, classic. Yeah, they they approved my license, gave me my license, and Terry and I, you know, we were sitting there in the office and we were going back and forth about what we were going to name the business. And actually, it was very close to being Gulf Coast Construction. I actually mm -hmm. have that LLC, mm -hmm. and it's funny because Terry said you can't do that because Justin has Gulf Life Realty, and yeah. it's so close <laughs> yeah. that you can't do that. Like we can't have all of our friends like be Gulf companies. Yeah. So I was like, but we all live on the Gulf. I don't right. understand. Right. So we're sitting there, and I actually um, in our office I have a plaque up on the wall, and from um, Gulf's real quick sidebar, yeah. I actually spent a lot of my childhood in the Cayman Islands. Tons. Okay. Tons. Oh really? Okay. My father was a developer down there. Okay. And so he developed a huge timeshare resort down there. So oh, nice. oh, basically nice. until I went to school, when I started school when I was little, yeah. we lived there. And right. then it was... I made every, many trips down there with them. It was really? so cool as a kid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every break we had, every summer we yeah. had, we were there because cool my dad story. was working there. Yeah. So, um, in fact, what I have cool story. this oh, necklace I know. It's insane. here for, made of black coral and gold, and my dad got them for everyone in the family when I was very little. And I have the baby turtle, and then my dad has a big one. And right. They all range, but Cayman's always been very near and dear to my heart. That's fantastic. I have a, a plaque that hangs in my office, and it is from a trophy from a marlin that my dad caught. And it says, <laughs> I, you know, this look, certifies know the... Blake really? Longacre yeah. caught this marlin on this trip. And it's this big photo, and it says the Cayman Islands right on top. And Terry, my husband, looked at me and said, Cayman Construction. And I was like, oh! Obviously, it's Cayman Construction. <laughs> like Here's, a load of bricks. That I so love that, awesome. by the way, because I think that Cayman is so awesome. Construction is a, just a genius construction, or just a genius name in, in general, just a business right. name. Oh, well, tell that to my accountant, because he ripped me a new one about the name. He said, you look like the most fraudulent. Uh, <laughs> fly by night. <laughs> Might as well be called Offshore Caribbean <laughs> Construction. exactly what he said to me. He's like, why would you have not consulted me on this? I was like... Well, I'm not doing anything hey, wrong. Tell him to get back I, to work. Yeah. I still, <laughs> I still you, have man. that jaded view of, of the Cayman Islands because everyone in the world thinks of the Cayman Islands as like offshore banking, right? right. Well, my whole experience as a young kid before I knew what the hell offshore banking, banking was, right. was going to the Cayman Islands, playing in the sand. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and having a great time. So like... That, that thought process for me, even uh, at my age now, it's that's not so there. That's so killer. Didn't occur to me either. That's so killer. <laughs> but basically, my accountant said, you will be audited, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, but tell him to do a good job, and it's exactly. not a problem. <laughs> I said, well, you know what? If we're doing what we should, then uh, that's audit right. Fuck it. That's right. Let him audit it. Um, the Gulf Coast construction thing, too. I mean, there's so much of it, and I realized it when I had my... Um, Gulf Life, yeah. The Gulf Life was that the, it almost gets lost in the noise uh -huh. because there's so much of that that it's like... You know, people were always like, oh, what's that name Absolutely. again? Absolutely. But people don't forget Cayman Construction. Right. People would forget Gulf Coast Construction. Right. I promise you. It's just white noise. And, and there's going to be another name that's almost the same exact thing. There's right. going to be, you know. Gulf Side Construction. But I think the cooler part about that. So you said like 96 cool things that I want to make sure we hit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it that you blended your history with your future. I think that's so kick-ass. Thank you. Because now when you look at, you know, you, you look at your koozie, right? That automatically takes you to a place that was so incredible in your in your life, mm -hmm. but it's, it's also taking you to a place that's incredible in your life now. The history and the, that, that part is badass. But you, you talked just a second ago about how difficult it was to get from point A to point B because so much of what you learned in the course and dealing with the state really didn't have to do with what you were doing every day in your business. That is so much like real estate, it's not even funny. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so real estate, you know, you, you know, taking the test and all that kind of stuff and getting past it. And, and, and getting, then you're at step one. That's right. Absolutely. Th then you can get started. Absolutely. Same thing with being a broker. You know, yeah. people go and get their broker's license and think that that's just that you can just go open a brokerage because you have your broker's license. And that is like the exact opposite of that. Okay. Yeah. So, so what is the one thing, if you can, if you can go back and, and think about the difference of what you thought was going to happen to what actually happened as a 
there one thing that that's just a great stands question. out that you were like, holy shit, I thought that, because I thought Million Dollar Club was, was people that made a million bucks in real estate. Yeah. That's what I thought Million Dollar Club when I first heard it. I was like, shit, I want to be part of that. Mm-hmm. No. And no, that's, that's just a million there, dollar right? volume. <laughs> so I was, so once I got past that disappointment, I was like, okay, I can make a million dollars in this. Let's, you know, what do we do to, what do we do to get there? What, what was it with you that, was there one thing that happened like that when learning to, especially with the background? That you had? Uh, I would say probably the most uh, surprising thing about construction is, you know, I, I feel like there's not anybody around now who hasn't seen some type of HGTV show. Oh my God. <laughs> so, uh, good point. Yeah. What a great. <laughs> they skip over all of the. You mean it's not that sexy in real life? It's not that easy? <laughs> yeah. You can't do it all in 30 minutes? All of <laughs> Under budget by yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> All the interesting problems you run into. I can't oh, tell man. you how many kitchens I've redone for people. And uh, I take down their kitchen cabinets and all the drywall behind it is completely molded out. Yeah, right. I and believe it. It's like, surprise. Right. Yeah. And, right. It's, and hopefully it's just the drywall. Yes. Yeah. And so um, we have a big phrase that we say called, uh, you never know what you're going to get when you open up a wall. Yeah. And that was kind of a chapter all of those HGTV shows missed. Right. Um, but, right. <laughs> but it's exciting. It's, That's so crazy to me. Yeah, yeah, because they don't want it out there, right? Right. right. I mean, they move on from that flip. They're not going to put that on there. No. I mean, how many times when you go to a job, how many times does a job go like you think it's going to go? Never. I have lowered my expectations <laughs> to where I want to say it's hard to surprise me, but I'm still surprised by yeah. things. I mean, yep. you, you, you not only the problems that you can have with the house, but you also have to think that there's a lot of people that become involved with projects like right. this too. Right. So it's not just managing the job and the construction itself. It's managing all the people that come along with it. And no sure. house is going to be able to be built by one person. You have drywallers, you have framers, you have painters, you have electricians, you have plumbers, you have masons, yeah. great people. So it's a, <laughs> there's a lot of curveballs that get thrown, but you know, you, as long as well, you, how kinda, you handle them, right? Yeah. yeah. If you take every curveball as a learning experience yep. and even if you lean into it, you know, lose in one way of it, but you come out learning from it. It's just, you know, makes you stronger Better. from it. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It makes you more knowledgeable. You know how to handle it the next time it gets thrown. That's a good point because there's like a, there's a podcast that I pay attention to and the guy uh, specifically consistently says, you know, you need to prepare for the unknown. You need mm-hmm. to prepare for what's going to get thrown at you because life is all about shit that you don't plan for. Yep. And it's how you react. So people always put their head down in the dirt and say, this happened to me, poor me, it's raining yeah. on my head. I'm a victim. Whereas if you prepare for that and get excited and things go your way, fantastic. It's mm-hmm. even more elating. But when things don't go your way, you're ready. Mm-hmm. What kind of sailor are you going to be if you never hit any storms? Yeah. Not a very skilled one. Right. Yep. So totally, totally true. The right. Tribulations so, are so important for growth. Yeah. Oh, my God. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it would be a boring ride. Oh, it would. gosh. Yeah, so you're, it's either a player or a victim. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the best way of looking at it yeah. is this happened to me. Oh, my God, it happened. It's horrible. I can't get anything from this. Or you're a player and you're like, screw it. Got to move forward. Yeah. And the next time you can talk to people in about your experience of, hey, this isn't going to happen again. Yeah. If we run into this, this is how we can deal with this because you had a, a good mindset about how to deal with it and you right. actually worked through it. Absolutely. Right. All right, so I've got to, I've got to ask a really obvious question here, and, and hopefully uh, hopefully it'll it it'll give you a chance to kind of open up a little bit to help some other folks out there that might be running into something similar to this. I know where this is going. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a woman, mm-hmm. and you deal with construction. Yes. And there's a lot of men in construction, from what I... There's all men in construction. All men in construction. Mm-hmm. So tell me a little... So you, you have the mindset for it. You got the intelligence. That has to scare the shit out of some people, doesn't it, that, that you run into? You've Especially got, men that are, like, insecure. Right. And, and in, in an industry that the doors have kind of been kept a little closed, until, especially until recently, mm-hmm. about it. So, uh, so am I just imagining that it's like this or no. is that really, okay. So do you want to talk about that sure. or do you want to, <laughs> yeah. especially with subcontractors and oh, yeah. stuff? I mean, I, I can't imagine like somebody walks on the job, like came into construction, who's the GC and you're like, no, no we're really, yeah, we're, we're like, we're, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's actually a lot of different sides of that because there's the subcontractor side of things. Then there's even the administrative side of things. I, uh, I mean, dealing with subcontractors in the beginning, it's, it, 
at least I, I would think that it's not as difficult for me because I, I am a very blunt person in general. Right. Um, I know that I don't, I, I, thanks to Justin, it's very hard to hurt my feelings. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well played. That started at four years old. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. So um, there, there definitely have been some, some poor situations on job sites in the beginning where I had to just tell somebody goodbye in right. front yeah. of right. other people and probably not the nicest way right. um, when someone decided to treat me like I was a subordinate right. because I'm a woman. Or incapable. Yeah. Or incapable. Right. Absolutely. And um, there is definitely a lot, a lot of uh, subcontractors that are in the field that you've run into, you know, they've been working day in, day out since they've been 15 with oh, yeah. their hands. Right. And then I come in and I hold the license and I'm the person in charge. Yeah. And it uh, will set some people on fire. Yeah. yeah, I believe it. And so I've I've, I've seen those people and it, it hasn't worked out very well for them at least. Um, right. It's, it's very funny to have those people come back to me and ask me for yeah. oh, I work bet. later. But yeah. uh, there's definitely, I am... There's things that I can deal with and there's things that I can't deal with on my job sites. Right. And one of the things that m my subs have come to learn is I can deal with mistakes being made when you right. correct those mistakes. Yep. I do not deal with people treating me poorly. Right. Or I, lying or right. 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 any yeah. of that. Because yeah. um, if they're going to be disrespectful about that, they're going to cut corners when they shouldn't. They're going to do all kinds of other shit that yeah. you can't right. You can't be responsible to the customer with somebody that's not respectful to you, period. Right. Exactly. That's all business exactly. in general, right? So good for you. That's, that's badass. And I will say... Um, Actually, fun recent story. Right. I uh, had to go and renew my license with Pinellas County. Mm -hmm. right. And I got in there, and the lady was not kind to me. And we cut through all sorts of tape, and she had all sorts of questions for me, and, you know, things that I had there. And she went to turn me away. She said, uh, where, oh, what did she ask me? She asked me where my signed affidavit was. And mm -hmm. I, I'm, you know, looking through all my paperwork of everything I need, and I said... What? I, you know, I don't, I don't understand. And she goes, okay, we can come back another day. And I said, no, no, no. What do I need? And she goes, you have to have a signed letter from your contractor saying you can come in here to do this. Oh my God. <laughs> and oh. I reached around my ID again. I said, I am the contractor. I bet you were like, but your blood was pumping. Immediately oh, yeah. it was, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm so yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> How could I have made that mistake? <laughs> This is a really important narrative, though. I, I mean, uh, 100% agree. Laura, I, I honestly think that, you know, getting this type of platform out there to other people, I mean, this opens doors, whether you realize it or not. And I know that you're very humble and very, you know, gracious for everything that you get in life. But I think that you have an opportunity in front of not only our local community, but on a, a worldwide community where you can show it is cool, it is accepted, and it is the future to be a badass woman. Yeah. And construction could be your parallel to that universe, and I think that that is a important message that men need to hear and women need to digest. I, I, I think that the message is honestly more important to be heard by the people that aren't willing to accept it than totally. by the... So, because badass women that are performing at a high level, they already know they're badasses. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. They, they're going to love it that you're standing up and everything, but they've already got that fire in their belly. You right. Know? Th this is more so for the people that don't want to admit that that change has right. happened. Totally. This isn't something that's happening, right? We all know that. This is something that has happened. Right. And, and so, so hopefully folks that are out there, you know, listening and paying attention, if they're not grabbing on to the fact that everybody needs to be judged by, right. by who they are and what they do right. versus by what your preconception is of them. Yeah. Hopefully they've got, they're going to move on from that. Business is moving too quickly now right. for people to not grab onto that. Yeah. Business is moving too fast for people to hold on to an old way of doing things because they think that's how they compartmentalize it. That shit's over. And I love That's that long about gone. business now. Though, I do too. Because it's, you know, it, it is truly a new frontier where the, the best are actually rising to the top. Yep. And, and I feel like for a long time, that hasn't been the case. It's not necessarily the best person who wins the job or who wins that. It's because who controlled the messaging was allowed to say whatever they wanted to it say. It was a power play. That's right. Yeah. And so, so people that, that weren't able to control the messaging... We're, we're being put in whatever box that the people that did control the messaging. Well, guess what? Yeah. This podcast is controlling messaging. Right. And so nobody's going to be able to stop this from getting out there. Right. right. We can get it out to whoever it needs to get out to. That, I think, is the big shift with all of this. And that bell has been rung a long time ago. Yeah. 
people are out there doing what they need to be doing, and the people that aren't paying attention to that, the subcontractors that aren't grabbing on to the media that is allowing them to realize what's happening, right. those are the ones that are quickly becoming outdated. Right. The brokers that aren't hiring people that that uh, you know and taking responsibility for the people that are working from that that bell is already rung. Yeah. I mean, there's you know in any industry period. There's too much information out there for people to be doing a shitty job and other folks to not realize that they've got an option to work with somebody who is doing things sure. the right way, who is got tw the equivalent of 12 degrees and did their general contract. <laughs> license. And, uh, I mean, by the age of 28. That's right, <laughs> right. So I, I, I love that part. I mean, that's, that's, that's badass. No, it's crazy kudos to you. It's something yeah. that my wife and I talk about all the time because my, my wife and, and uh, Lauren are, are really, really good friends right yeah. now. And they're two very... Dr driven. A, yeah. a personality, yeah. Yeah. powerful women, and it's. I wouldn't want to surround myself with anybody different in my right. life. I mean, I think that you are the company you keep. That's right. The, some total of the five people you spend the most time. Absolutely. Her husband is is the exact same way. He's an A driver. I mean, he he's somebody that I spend a lot of time with, and I think that if you're not having these types of conversations and if you aren't rising together, I think you need to look around. Yeah. Absolutely. Agree. You know. Absolutely. Agree. So so uh, so you were at uh, you were at Elevate. What'd you think? Oh, Elevate was cool. Yeah. I actually had no idea you were going to speak for so long and oh, do everything. Yeah. So that was that was wonderful. Sorry, and yeah, he did a great job. Yeah, no, you, you did, did a, a good job. Wonderful yeah. job. You know, what? we did we did do a kick-ass job, didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I will say that particular highlight for me was that blockbuster video commercial. Oh yeah. Scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was funny. That was. It that was awesome. It looked like a parody. Wasn't? And then I was like, oh, oh that my God, that's real. It ended and I said, oh, that's real. Okay. That was it. So I'm sure that we made plenty of blockbuster runs as kids. Oh, oh yeah, you know, that's yeah. That's the thing. On Friday when mom was like, oh, okay, we'll Let's go. Blockbuster. Load up. That was the point. That was the point that he made, though. A kid would die if they had to get in a car with their parent right now and go pick out a movie Can that you way. Imagine? They would, <laughs> oh my gosh, they would be mortified I, I couldn't wait to do that we did, we were in such a small town we didn't even have a blockbuster it was Roland's photo and video is what it was no blockbuster anywhere around and uh, and so the you know there was probably a hundred movies on the wall instead of 10,000 or whatever it was but we loved that opportunity oh, yeah. to go my kid my daughter would oh my god are you kidding yeah. me she would <laughs> die if she had to do that yeah and then rewind it because somebody <laughs> else didn't that's so great I'm, i you mean you had to get that separate machine that oh like, yeah rewinder that's right oh, i remember yeah. that yeah. that's so funny otherwise it would take forever mm -hmm. and then you didn't take it back there was a scramble at the last minute mm -hmm. to take it back because nobody wanted to pay for the movies for mm -hmm. <laughs> for one more night and if it yeah. went back by five o'clock oh my god it was ridiculous so well we appreciate you being a sponsor of elevate and, and there's going to be many really cool things to come yep. of that and uh, definitely more, you know, events to come. So I know that there was plenty of realtors in there who got yeah. a lot from you. And it was a great time too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're glad you made it. And glad you did it. And, and by the way, you've got some swag, right? So if uh, if you guys, yeah, you know, I'm like and subscribe. Besides, and uh, there's some there's some swag. Just give us a comment, and we'll get some uh, we'll get some stuff to you uh, that uh, that's from from Cayman Construction. We really appreciate you. Yeah, uh, she's appreciate around you the corner. That. So uh, what I do want to talk about really quick. So I want to um, give the public an understanding of exactly what type of jobs you do, what your current inventory looks like, and what you want in the future, and what an ideal client looks like, so that okay. you know the people can maybe send you some referrals. Sure, absolutely. Well, I actually work with realtors quite a bit. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. I actually have my scope all over the entire state of Florida, and uh, I help right. agents that have channels with REO to uh, okay. help that yep. bank get the house back in to standing point to where they can sell it. And a lot of the times that has to just us going there and rekeying the house, right. or uh, maybe sometimes we go and do an absolute head to toe renovation for it. Right. Uh, locally in town, I do new constructions. I do remodels here. Um, I, I do, I really appreciate uh, the REO yeah. work right. and uh, working for with realtors and helping them. And uh, it's it's a, a huge part of what I do. I'd probably say it's about 70, 75% of what I do is in yeah. that scope. Um, but otherwise, I'm, I'm really enjoying the new construction right now. Right. And I will say a vacant house is always my favorite thing. Uh, <laughs> I totally get it. I totally get it. That's the same for realtors when, oh, they, yeah. when they have to go to show their own listing or oh, whatever. You know it. Oh, yeah. A vacant house is it. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, no doubt. No so what's the future look like for you? What's what's um, what's on your 2020 goals? What's on your horizon? Oh well, uh, we we the last two years have kind of exploded so quickly for it's us. It's a blur. Right. It's a blur. Um, 2018 is when um, came in construction got started halfway through the year, and I did 85,000 in sales, and then uh, 
Last year, I did $2.6 million in sales. Wow. So that's from zero to 100 real quick. Well, yeah. So you know what? my poor father doing these books right now. <laughs> yeah. um, what and happened? So <laughs> that's right. <laughs> this year, it doesn't exactly look like it's going to slow down. And I actually have a um, an interesting channel that we're looking into for a, a, quite a large banking system, we'll call it, that wants me to do constructions for all of their... Uh, acquisitions that they oh, have and so um, of more of that type of REO um, I like I said I really do enjoy that channel yeah, that and getting cool. into more new construction and developing I would like to start making you know my own spec homes right sure so that's right. a, a big goal of ours as well cool that's awesome well uh, Lauren's Cayman construction is on West Bay it's right across the street from uh, West Shore Pizza there right and that little plaza. What's the address for Cayman Construction? It's 2938 West 8. Bay Drive, Suite A. So, so how it's to, just west of Panera. Yeah, yeah. so how do, how do people get connected with you? How do they, how do they, what's oh, the email, what's the phone She's all over all the that? webs. All over the webs. All, you the, can, you can just all over Google the interweb? Me. Yeah, you can Google me. We're on all forms of social media. We have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have a website, a beautiful website. Right. And, uh, yeah. Wonderful marketing. There's koozies, right. hats, shirts. Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. All nice. kinds of stuff. Nice. Cool. Well, we love you being on. Yeah. Thank you so much yep. for having me. I Lauren, thank it. you for being an entrepreneur. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being a... Um, role model. A role model. <laughs> a powerful woman. Just a badass. All around badass. Go like, subscribe. Like, subscribe. Comment. Click, comment. Got to do all that stuff, guys. All Thanks. the above. Peace out. Peace. Bye.